Hello again, everybody. I want to share something with you that I've read in um, this book, The Millennial Maze. I talked about it gives different views on the millennial kingdom, quote unquote, and revelation. Uh, you know, it gives a pre millennial view and, uh, you know, futurist, you know, post millennial and, uh, and all that. Uh, all millennial or a millennial, which is kind of what I would say that I am in a way, you know, which basically teaches that there is no physical, literal millennial kingdom. It's symbolic. It's, um, but I think, you know, I don't agree with some, some, you know, there might be a lot of different views on amillennialism. If it's used just to say that it's, that there's no physical, literal millennial kingdom with Christ, uh, you know, reigning on the earth for a thousand years, um, then I'm fine with that. But there's also, you know, I think a lot of amillennialists will say that we're living in the millennial kingdom now, like whoever gets saved is in that millennial kingdom or something like that. And, you know, I look at the book of Revelation as a whole as kind of a story. It's kind of separate in its own way, but, you know, it also relates to a lot of scripture. But, you know, I see the millennial kingdom as kind of like an ending to that story that Revelation is. But anyways... I'm looking at the amillennial position on here, reading some things they're saying, and there's an important verse that they cover that I haven't really talked about. I've looked at before, but I just read this in this book. I did some more research on it, and I feel like I'm kind of maybe getting a better understanding of this. But I'm going to read this section in uh, the Millennial Maze. It says, Proponents who follow the traditional amillennial interpretation claim that the text does not refer to Okay, actually, I better talk about the verse that I'm going to talk about first, okay? Basically, what I'm going to talk about is Romans 11:25, which says, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So, you know, a lot of people interpret this that, you know, the fullness of the Gentiles, that means, you know, when all the Gentiles that are, you know, going to be saved within the church, uh, that's when the rapture happens. And then, you know, after that, during the seven-year tribulation and, you know, in the millennial kingdom, that's when um, all Israel shall be saved. Actually, that's the verse that I'm covering. Uh, so it's, it's kind of this whole section. But the next verse is Romans 11:26. It says, And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Sion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So that's really what we're looking at here. All Israel shall be saved. When does this happen, or how do we interpret this verse, actually, is what we need to ask. But the, way, the main way that it's taught, and the main way that people will take it and believe, as I did before, is that you know this is a question of when does this happen. When does the fullness of the Gentiles come in? What does that mean? And when and how is all Israel saved? Okay, and there's a lot of questions about these verses. You know, it also ties into replacement theology and stuff. What is the Israel being spoken of here? Is it national Israel? Is it, you know, spiritual Israel? Somehow now it's like the Gentiles and national Israel, or, or what is it? You know. Anyways, I'm going to read from this on the in the all millennial section on the millennial kingdom. Okay. So this this verse it kind of has to do with the millennial kingdom because people will use this to teach that that all Israel will be saved in the millennial kingdom, which they'll say is a future event, you know, which happens after you know the rapture, after the seven year tribulation, blah blah blah. That's that that whole I, that whole thought of revelation and and end times and stuff that all needs to be scrapped. Honestly, you just need to forget all that stuff. Uh. Anyways, proponents who follow the traditional amillennial interpretation claim that the text does not refer to the eschatological future, but to the present age. This is indicated by the word so, and this is really interesting. This is one of the main things I wanted to share. Uh, the word so describes the manner, not the time, of the salvation of Israel, namely by means of the process of grafting into the good olive tree. Hence, the Jews are not saved after the full number of Gentiles, that is, immediately prior to or during the millennium, as dispensationalists argue, but concurrent with the Gentiles. Throughout the centuries of the church age, 
the elect remnant is gathered out of the people of Israel by preaching by the preaching of the gospel rather than a future national restoration therefore these expositors anticipate what uh, what they term a remnant conversion and that seems to be way more accurate to me so basically let's see here he's talking about being grafted into the olive tree and stuff and uh Let's just, you know, go back to Romans 11:25. It says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel. So, you know, I see that as meaning that, you know, not all Israel is saved. You know, there are lots of those who are, you know, ethnic Jews who reject the gospel. And it says, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Now, this is interesting because this makes us think that this is some kind of a time. And, you know, it's kind of taught that the fullness of the Gentiles means, you know, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. You know, come into what? Into the kingdom, into the church. That's how people usually want to interpret that. Um, now, I saw in another translation, it says, until the fulfillment of the Gentiles be come in. Okay. And I think that kind of gives some more insight to what this means. And uh, it doesn't mean that I'm, you know, rejecting the King James or anything. I think that fullness is fine, but I kind of, you know, seeing how other ways how it can be, you know, exposited, how it can be explained. The fullness, it still means the same thing. But, you know, it's like I got another clue from seeing, you know, also the fulfillment. So, um, so blindness in part is happening to Israel until the fulfillment of the Gentiles become in. Okay, basically, so this means, you know, the Gentiles are coming in and preaching the gospel to Israel, and that's what's going to save those uh, ethnic Jews. They're going to get saved by believing the gospel that, you know, Gentiles will present to them. So that's, that's basically it. So all Israel shall be saved. So I believe that we're talking about a remnant of Israel here, you know, those who are truly of Israel. Um, so, you know, he says before, you know, not all Jews are true Jews. You know, those who believe in the gospel, those ethnic Jews that believe in the gospel, those are the true Jews. And so Israel will be saved. Those ethnic Jews will be saved by the fulfillment of the Gentiles preaching the gospel. Okay. As it is written, there shall come out of Sion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. So as concerning the gospel, we're talking about preaching the gospel here, which basically it all ties in together with what I just said, how I just explained that. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. Okay, we're talking about national Israel, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, for in times past uh have for as ye in times past have not believed yet now obtain mercy through their unbelief even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they may obtain mercy for god hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all oh the depths and riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of god how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out for who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. But anyways, we see, he just continues on, he's talking about the gospel, and he says how, you know, in times past, you know, the Gentiles didn't believe, and um, they obtained, uh, you know, Anyways, I'm just <laughs> getting right ahead of myself. Anyway, so what we're saying here is that the fullness of the Gentiles is, until the fullness of the Gentiles become in, it's the fulfillment of the Gentiles preaching the gospel to Israel. And uh, that's how Jews are going to become saved. So it's not a future national repentance it doesn't have anything to do with the millennial kingdom or anything like that um, you know it's talking about you know right now really so it's uh, very interesting but so 
I hope that I kind of helped you understand that. I think that that's the understanding I get out of it. It could be explained better. I'll have to look over it more. But that's not something that somebody can use to prove some kind of future millennial kingdom. Okay, And they're just looking at the book of Revelation and um, unfortunately trying to interpret it literally and physically. Like it has to be some kind of prophecy or something. But it's really just like a story to get a... Uh, I general ideas across so that's that God bless